It's a privilege and an honor this morning to have Pastor Ben Turner coming to preach for us. He uh, taught in Sunday school already, and he's preaching for us this morning. He is a good friend of mine and our family, and uh, the Lord led him and his family to British Columbia, Vancouver area, in the year 2000. In the year 2001, they established the Anchor Baptist Church uh, there in June of 2001, and uh, they will be celebrating 22 years this coming June. And my family and I had the opportunity to work with him and his wife and his children uh, for almost 14 years uh, before coming here. And in the transition time and speaking with Pastor Turner, uh, it was a difficult process, but as we saw the plan of the Lord unfolding for our family to move here, uh, I'm thankful that Pastor Turner was willing to uh, be obedient to the, the will of God and allowing us to go to come here. And he's really been a friend to me, and I've learned much in the many years that I was able to labor with him. And I know he'll be a great blessing as he preaches for us today. So let's get our Bibles ready as he comes and preaches for us. Thank you. Thank you. If you have your Bible, please turn with me to the book of John. You won't stay there, but I just feel led of the Lord to read a very familiar verse of Scripture. Uh, beautiful music uh, this morning. Wow. Uh, starting with the choir and uh, tremendous opener and uh, choir special. Uh, that's a blessing. It really touched my heart. Thank you for those of you, those of you that labor in the choir and lead and play and all of that. And then uh, the beautiful offertory that we heard. Uh, tremendous message and song. The grace of God. It surely is amazing, isn't it? And then this duet. Very beautiful. And we just give God all the glory. But, and even hearing everyone sing and singing with the congregation. There's something about these uh, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs that prepare us for the word of God. And I want you to know I don't have anything uh, in my flesh to help you with. Because the Bible said in our flesh there dwelleth no good thing. And I hope you'll pray for me even in this hour. And I need the help of the Lord. I'm not used to preaching to this many people. In fact, I was counting heads in the choir. I think that's about how many people I'm used to preaching to, about how many are in your choir. We praise the Lord for every church. It's not a matter of the size that's important. It's a matter of the sort of the church and its faithfulness to the Lord. But I am thrilled to be with this many people on the Lord's Day. And we give God all the glory for it. John chapter 3 Again, from just being in the service, I've been overwhelmed by God's love. Many of you could stand here today and preach the word of God. I don't really deserve to be here. Uh, I'm just thankful for the opportunity. But I'm overwhelmed by God's love for me this morning. That he would rescue a sinner like me. That he would send a country preacher down a gravel road many, many decades ago. And he would open the Bible and lead my grandmother to the Lord. And because of God's love, my grandmother would rear five boys with not much help from her husband, my grandpa, when it came to the things of the Lord. Don't really know if he ever got saved. But she would rear five boys, and one of those boys would be my father. He would get saved at teen camp as a teenager. And he would go to church even in early days with my mother. My mother said at grade nine, she... She loved my dad, and obviously they weren't married, and he wasn't my dad yet, but she loved him at grade nine. They would get married in 1970, and uh, still married today and loving the Lord. But I don't know who that preacher is that maybe he didn't think he was doing a whole lot for the Lord. Maybe he was discouraged at times in a very country setting, if you will, in southeast Ohio. But I'm so thankful that the love of God allowed him to win my grandmother the Lord, who then allowed my grandmother to 
lead a godly life in front of my father who would come to know the Lord and my mother would come to know the Lord in the same, really in the same ministry. Small church there in Albany, Ohio. And then in 1973, I would come bouncing into their life. And because of the emphasis of the word of God in our home, I would be saved at an early age. Unworthy of that. But uh, even sitting here this morning and just re rethinking about all of that, I wasn't really thinking that way until the, the music and the choir and the special and all of this. May we never get over. Amen. May we never get over the love of God. Amen. You probably could quote it with me. Let's read it together. John 3, 16. Let's, let's quote it together or read it together this morning. Ready? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. May we never get over that. For God, creator God, holy God, infinite God, all-powerful God, all-knowing God, all-loving God, loves you this morning, loves me this morning. He rescued you. He rescued me. And if you're not saved here today, if you don't know Christ as Savior, I want you to know, if you don't hear anything else, hear this. God loves you. And God wants you to be in his family. And we're going to talk about that as we go to Luke 23. Luke 23. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord. I have been greatly encouraged to be uh, on this property numerous times, starting with Thursday night. And uh, again, my wife was planning on being here with me. But her health did not allow that. And, uh, but we're truly grateful uh, to be in here, be here today and uh, praying for you. We've prayed for this church. We've prayed for this college. And I have a, I have a beautiful hoodie. I want to thank whoever provided that with Canadian Baptist Bible College on it. So we're going to wear that thing in, in the Vancouver area. And uh, I'm, it'll help keep me warm. All of my, all of my hoodies are in storage and so uh, we had a little move unplanned last year as well. So I needed one. Thank you for that. And uh, honored to see what the Lord has done here in this great place. Winkler, Manitoba. Wow. What a miracle. What a miracle that God is continuing to do. And I'm thankful to be a small part of it today. Luke 23 and verse 32. And there were... Also, two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left, then said, Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They parted his raiment and cast lots, and the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto, the, unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, today, wow, what a day that must have been, shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Bible. We thank you for your love. The song says, O love that will not let me go, 
Thank you for that love. I don't deserve it, but I thank you for it. Lord, may we meditate and even think on that as we speak for a few minutes. As the pastor said, Lord, help us not to think about what happened last week and what might be coming this week. To do our best to focus on the scripture, focus on the, 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 uh, the Lord Jesus and what he has for us. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to speak to you this morning for a few moments on this thought, the greatest exchange the greatest exchange. We'll come back to our text. Turn over quickly with me, if you would, in your Bible to Romans chapter 5. The greatest exchange. The Bible says in Romans 5 and verse 8, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Verse 6, if you just scan up the page just a little bit, the Bible says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. You don't have to look very long and very far in your Bible to discover that uh, we're sinners. And uh, we've fallen short of the glory of God. The Word of God tells us that specifically in Romans chapter number 3. And because of that sin that uh, I have committed and that you have committed, the Bible clearly tells us in Romans 6, 23, that the wages of sin is death. But notice, if you will, again with me, in verse number 11 of Romans chapter 5, it says, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. The atonement. What is this atonement? The word means an adjustment of a difference, a reconciliation, a restoration to favor. In the New Testament of the restoration of the favor of God to sinners, this favor that, I've, that I'm not in with God before I come to the Lord Jesus Christ, but this favor, this exchange, I'm out of favor with God, I'm the enemy of God, but when I come to the Lord Jesus Christ, I have this atonement, that is the exchange that I get. This atonement means is a means by which payment is made for the violation of God's will. This atonement, this payment provides reconciliation to God. There's only one who could provide this atonement. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only one who could provide this atonement. And the only way it was provided is by the love of God. It was the love of God that what made it possible for the greatest exchange in my entire life. I was able to exchange my sin debt. If you're saved with me this morning, here with me this morning, think about it. You were able to exchange your sin debt. You were able to exchange hell, eternal hell, eternal punishment. You were, because of the love of God, you were able to exchange that sin debt for the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. When God looks at me and when God looks at you as a saved sinner, as a saint, he sees the righteousness of God. He no longer sees my sin. He no longer sees my transgression. He no longer sees whatever it may be, fill in the blank. He sees the righteousness of God. I don't deserve that, but I'm so thankful for that exchange. It happened to me, as I said in Sunday school, when I was nine years old, I exchanged my sinfulness for Christ's righteousness. I wonder if you're here, as you're here this morning, or maybe joining us online. I wonder, have you ever made the exchange? You can't exchange your sinfulness for religion. You won't go anywhere. You can't exchange your sinfulness even by baptism. It won't do anything. You'll just be wet when you get done. It's important, but it's not the exchange. It doesn't wash away your sin. I wonder, have you made the greatest exchange? The Bible says in John 1 and 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. God became man. God became man in the Lord Jesus Christ that we might be able to be with God someday. The Lord Jesus Christ willingly gave his life. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So what is this atonement? Let's see number one, the place of the atonement as we go back to Luke chapter number 23. The place of the atonement. 
I give you this thought, though. It's, 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 I don't know who made the statement. One of those source unknowns. It costs more to redeem me than to create me. In creation, there was but a speaking of the word. In redeeming me, there was the shedding of blood. Oh, the cost. What can wash away our sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that made me white as snow. It was costly, but he did it for us. Why? Because he loves us. The place of the atonement. Notice in this place of the atonement in verses 32 to 38. The place of Calvary. The place of a skull. Mr. Spurgeon said, we took our sins and drove them like nails through his hands and feet. We lifted him up high on the cross of our transgressions and then we pierced his feet through with the spear of our unbelief. As we see this great suffering in this place in verses 32 and 33, the Bible says, and there were two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. He had already been through a brutal beating and now they've come to Calvary. Now they've come to the place of capital punishment that was inflicted by the crucifixion. The Bible says in verse 34, Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. There was the embarrassment. And yet Jesus willingly offered forgiveness even there in his last and his dying moments. This forgiveness was made possible as we go to 1 Peter quickly. 1 Peter chapter number 1 as we consider the place of the atonement. It was Calvary. It was on the cross. There was great suffering. There was shed blood. 1 Peter 1 and verse 18. For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Oh, may we make sure that tradition is never something that, that makes us think we're saved because of tradition, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood. We see there was great suffering, but also we see at this place of atonement, there was great shame. Great shame. His clothes were stripped from his body. His clothes were gambled for. Notice verse 35, the Bible says, and people stood beholding, gazing at this sight. Think of it. The Bible would say that he was not even recognizable at this point of being even a human being. And the gazing and the shame that was there. Notice the ridicule that was also there in verse number 35 of the religious rulers of the day and leaders of the day, and they derided him, they mocked him. He saved others himself he cannot save. The soldiers mocked him in verses 36 and verse 37. All of this is happening and all of this is taking place so we can experience the greatest exchange. The greatest exchange. I mean, no store can offer an exchange like what God offers us this morning. No place can offer us a deal like God offers us today because of the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ slain from the foundation of the world. I mean, it's an awesome exchange. I'm thankful today that I am redeemed and not with silver and gold, but I'm redeemed today by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was a place of atonement. But number two, we see the provision of the atonement. Look at verses 39. Verse 39, please. The provision of the atonement. Notice it says, And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself. This malefactor, this is a criminal. This is a wrongdoer here, if you will. This is why Jesus Christ came. He came for criminals like me. He came for sinners like me. He came for malefactors like you. He came for the, for the unjust so that they could be just. Two guilty criminals surrounding one righteous Savior. Think about it, the exchange. One made the exchange at the last moment. Think about it. 
right up into the last moment, the last few breaths, this one malefactor said, no, no, hey, be quiet. There's something special. Lord, remember me. He made the exchange right before it was too late. And think about it this morning. You're still breathing God's air, so there's still time to make the exchange. There will come a day, though, where the old ticker will stop. And nobody gets a warning. Some may get a little bit of a warning, maybe for disease purposes. I'm not trying to be morbid or unkind, but sometimes people just drop over and that's it. And at that point, it'll be too late to make the exchange. I'll, I'll wait until I get my life in order to make the exchange. No, no, no. That's why Jesus Christ says, I want to exchange it now because you can't get your life in order until the Lord Jesus Christ comes in, until you make that exchange. And the malefactor, of the one of them, he made the exchange. The other one, though, never made the exchange. Think of that. That scene on Calvary was nothing compared to what that other malefactor who made fun when he took his last breath, the scene just changed dramatically. And he's still in hell today. But think of the scene for the other malefactor who said, Lord, remember me when thou goest into thy kingdom. Lord, remember me. And he said, today, today. I mean, talk about a change. Talk about an exchange from living a life of sin and, and all of that and now taking his last breath and headed to the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, what an exchange. What a blessing. The provision, what was provided, forgiveness was provided. Forgiveness was provided. One rejected the forgiveness and railed on him. The word there means to speak evil of. It means even to blaspheme. That's what one did. One received, though, in simple faith. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. It's still simple faith. Notice the word remember as we talked about it already, to be recalled or to return to one, one's mind. Some saw Jesus raise the dead and never believed. But the robber sees Jesus being put to death and believes. Wow. Oh, but three days later, praise God. Let's not leave that out of the picture, amen. Three days later, up from the grave, he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose the victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose. I know because he lives within me. I know because he's interceding on my behalf. The provision of the atonement, there was forgiveness provided. Also, there was eternity with Jesus Christ provided. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. In just a few moments, this criminal would be in the presence of God for all eternity. We talked about it already, but a little just quickly. Number three, we see the payment, the payment of the atonement in verses 44 to 46. And it was about the sixth hour and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. It's the middle of the day. It's afternoon and all of a sudden darkness comes. As the wrath of God is poured out on his son. If you'll turn back with me quickly to Matthew 27. Matthew 27, and this is where I actually had my Bible, some of my Bible reading this morning. Not really planned, but only by the Lord and for this day. But the Bible says in verse 45 of Matthew 27, thank you for listening to the Lord. That God's doing a work. To Him be all the glory. Now from the sixth hour, verse 45, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The payment was great. Oh, the payment was great. In that moment of time, the father turned his back, if you will, on the son. Why? Because my sin was placed on the Lord Jesus. And your sin, past, present, and future, some of these things are really hard for my, as I say, my peanut of a brain to understand how that works. 
But I believe as the scriptures tell us that, that I am here righteous before you today, not because of me, but because of this payment that is made. But think about it, in the darkness of the hour, in the loneliness of the hour, the Lord Jesus Christ bearing all the, the guilt and the shame of all of our sin. And he cries out to the Father, as we just read. And yet he willingly did this. He willingly, he laid down his life. I'm thankful no one took it from him. No one took it from him. He willingly laid down his life. This payment, I'm so thankful to tell you today, not only gives us entrance to heaven someday, but right now, praise be to God at a praying church. I know I'm at a praying church. It gives us access to the Father. Amen. Access to the Father. Look, if you will, in, in um, Hebrews chapter, or excuse me, verse 45, as we go back to our text, Luke's gospel. Verse 45, the Bible says, and the sun was darkened, and sorry to have to move quickly here, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. The veil of the temple was rent in the midst. This veil made of thick woven material could not have been torn by human hands. We believe that it was a very act of God that tore, that, that, tore that, uh, that veil, and it wasn't just tearing some material. It was for all time, right now for us today, we can go at any time, any, any moment, we can go into the presence of God through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This was part of what was offered because of the payment. I have access to the Father, Hebrews 9 and 24, for Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us I'm thankful for the payment that was made so I could have an exchange of we could have an exchange in the church age if you will of not praying to anyone but praying to the father yeah, direct access to the father what an exchange yeah, we don't have to go into a booth with a curtain yeah. we go to the father Oh, we go to the Father. Think about it. We don't go to the Father pridefully. I pray we go humbly, but we go boldly because of the exchange. And as I mentioned a moment ago, this payment was given voluntarily. Would you turn with me just one more time to John's gospel in chapter 10? John 10. The greatest exchange. I wonder, have you made it yet? Have you made the greatest exchange? If you died today, would you be in heaven with the one malefactor who said, remember me? Or would you be in hell for all eternity with the other malefactor who derided him and ridiculed him? It matters not if you have a suit and tie on or a dress on. None of that matters when it comes to this. This isn't what we're talking about. We're talking about exchanging your sin debt for his righteousness. Have you made that exchange? I trust you won't wait another day. I trust you won't walk out of here and get into your car or your truck and start it up and head down the road without having made that exchange. If you're a young person here today and your family's with you, talk to your dad, talk to your mom, talk to someone. If you're a teenager here today, talk to someone. Don't, don't go, out into, go out into this community without putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that God is convicting you. No preacher can convict you, but the Holy Spirit of God. I'm praying he's squeezing your heart right now and saying, yes, you're, listen, listen to what the Bible is saying. You need to make that exchange and you need to make it today. John chapter 10, verse 10. Oh, I love reading John 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal, verse 10, and to kill and to destroy. But he said, I am come that they might have life. Amen. And that they might have it more abundantly. I'm thankful that that starts now. That abundant life is now. I've exchanged, you, we are exchanging maybe a dead, dull life for a life of excitement and a life of victory and a life of joy. It's not just get saved and then it's boring until we get to heaven. No, the greatest life to live is a life filled with the Spirit of God, watching God do great and mighty things and giving God all the glory. I've come to give him abundant life. He said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd and, known, and know my sheep and have known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep. I lay it down. 
Verse 17, therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. Here it is. I love John 10, 18. No man taketh it from me. No man. But I, talk about humility, talk about love, but I lay it down myself. I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. The greatest exchange. Three crosses there that day, but only two choices. One chose to reject, one chose to receive. One chose to take part in the greatest exchange ever. Have you made that choice? Can you see yourself as a sinner in need of a Savior? Because that's where it has to start. No one can make the greatest exchange without recognizing they need to make the greatest exchange because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No one can make the greatest exchange until they realize that the word of God says, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. And a holy God, a loving God, taps us on the heart today. Maybe you're here and you've never made that greatest exchange. And he says, today you need to make the exchange. Today you need to repent of your sin. You need to trust Christ as Savior. You need to receive him by faith. Possibly many of you have made that greatest exchange. Let's be thankful. Let's be thankful that we have been forgiven. Let's be thankful that our home in heaven is being prepared for us. But let's not live like we're going there tomorrow. Let's live. And what I mean by that is let's live like God has something for us to do each and every day. Let's be thankful that God was willing to exchange. God was willing to allow his son to go to the cross. And it all comes back to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. There's the exchange. But have everlasting life. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes this morning. We have a time of invitation. Have you made the greatest exchange? Only you and God know. If you're here this morning and you're questioning, I don't know if I've ever made that exchange, then I think you probably need to. If God's working, I'm not trying to pull anybody down the aisle. That's not my job. I'm, my, my job is to deliver a message that I pray God will use and he'll get the glory for it. But I am concerned if you've never made that exchange that you would not be like the one malefactor and say, ah, and go on with life and miss the opportunity to exchange perishing for everlasting life. If you need to make that exchange today, in just a moment, there'll be an opportunity for you to come. Pray at this altar, maybe find a pastor. I, I need to make that exchange, pastor. God's working on my heart right now. I've never made that exchange. Maybe you've been in church your whole life. Like, you, like I said earlier, I've been in church my whole life. But maybe, you know, uh, you just know that truly you're not saved. Again, I'm not trying to talk anybody out of anything. But if God's spirit is working, don't say no to the spirit. Say yes. Possibly you're, you're saved, you're on your way to heaven, but you've never been scripturally baptized. That's the next step. Maybe you've been saved and scripturally baptized, but you have somebody on your heart right now who's never been saved. Maybe you would be willing to come to the altar and pray for them that they would make that exchange even this week. 
We heard many co-workers being prayed for the other day. Maybe you're, you could come and pray for that co-worker that you've been witnessing to. Your mom, your dad, your grandma, your grandpa. I don't know who it might be, but God's put somebody on your heart that they have yet to make this greatest exchange. They're one heartbeat away from eternity. However God leads, follow the leading of the Lord.